the Flight Sim Labs A320X and A321X Sharklets are now available for prepared. The Sharklets do look fantastic, but this new add-on includes much more than just the changes to the wingtips. Perhaps the biggest feature is the new EFB function, and the fact you can use it on almost any external device. In this video, we'll take you through how you can set up your EFB on any external device, and also through some of its unique functions. The electronic flight bag is a device used by various airlines around the world to help pilots stop carrying tons of paperwork. Not only that, but the tablet sized devices are also equipped with software to help calculate takeoff speeds, weight and balance, and also view charts for airports all around the world. Flight Sim Labs has opted to include a iPad style tablet, and as you can see, it does look very similar to the real thing. So let's start by taking you through some of the options available in the EFB with the Flight Sim Labs A320X and A321X Sharklets. Once you have power in your aircraft, you'll first need to long right mouse click on the tablet's home button. This will then present you with the home screen which has various options to choose from. So starting from the top left, let's cycle through each one and what they'll be used for. So in the manuals, this is fairly self-explanatory. This hosts all of the FS Labs manuals for the A320X series. There's not an excuse now to not read the manuals as you can do it right from the flight deck. As for connections, this option is super cool. You'll be able to control various parts of the plane from this tablet device. You can open doors, cargo bays, and even connect various ground service equipment directly through this option. Also, if you have GSX installed, you can request various services such as the stairs, jetways, pushback, and even more from the tablet. And yes, this does work on the external device as well, which I'll show you shortly. On to the OFP. Once you have uplinked your OFP to the aircraft, you'll be able to see various flight details on your flight displayed right here. This is taken from the PDF generated by Simbrief. As for the checklist, a default checklist will be included so you can follow standard operating procedures. However, you can also import your own checklists or even create your own that are specific to specific airlines. The load sheet will give you an idea of your current center of gravity as well as showing your current weight and balance once you have loaded your aircraft full of fuel, passengers, baggage and catering. Now onto the takeoff section. If you're familiar with the Atsu request to get the performance information, then this takeoff section will be mostly familiar. This section allows you to calculate your takeoff speeds and also along with some additional information. Once you have inputted your required information into the FMC, you'll be able to adjust some elements such as the thrust rating, configuration, etc. and then calculate your takeoff speeds. You'll then need to select the runway, click calculate, and then you'll be presented with the information you can then use in your flight. Clicking print will also send the data to your printer and generate an ACARS message. As for the landing, this is very similar to the takeoff section. It provides you with the approach speeds, ideal braking settings, and you can adjust the number of variables and calculate them based on the data you input. Again, this is completely integrated with the aircraft itself. Before the EFB was implemented, you were able to receive ACARS messages either through a printout if you had a printer, or through the FMC, or if you had a third party service called Pushover used, then you'd be able to get the messages that way. However, with the new EFB, you can now get your messages directly through the tablet. Each is now also categorized into their relevant section, and furthermore, you can continue to send messages over the Hoppy network with this functionality. Maintenance is hooked up to the aircraft and you'll be able to reset various parts of the aircraft as such as your engine oil and also cleaning the cockpit windows. And finally we have the map section. It is worth noting that at the time of recording this the map section has been taken offline for some back-end development work but we are rest assured by FS Labs that it's coming back online soon. However I'll take you through some of it based on the imagery we have seen. And this is perhaps one of the more interesting elements of the EFB. The map will give you an overview of your current position, your routing, and also local traffic. 
This map hooks up to your AR traffic within the simulator and shows their position on the EFP map. Furthermore, it also connects to your local ATC network, so if you are flying on VATSIM, you can easily see nearby traffic. Likewise, flying on VATSIM will also show the active online ATC. Finally, the map also pulls in the latest Sigma data, providing your flight into close to real time, which you can identify on the map. And this is great to see what other pilots are reporting about weather along the route and give you an idea of what to expect once you approach that section. Once the tablet is switched on, you can navigate to any of the options using your mouse. To head back to each of the options within the sim, you just need to press the home button. In addition to the options listed above, you can also hook up various websites to your tablet. The default options are both SimBrief and Navigraph, along with the FS Labs forum and also the Hoppy network. By linking SimBrief and Navigraph to the sim and logging in, you'll be able to plan flights using SimBrief or check out the charts providing you have your Navigraph account. You can also link any website you so choose to, I recommend FS Elite of course, but you can choose pretty much anything including things like Netflix and YouTube and if you want you can uh, watch some videos in flight. And to navigate the sites it's just as simple as using your mouse as you would expect and the EFB also enables you to type. So once your mouse is over the EFB display you'll see like a yellow outline and this indicates you're in a section and you can type away. The key commands then won't affect the sim and you won't accidentally pause or switch views for example. You can also press the keyboard button to enable and disable this manually. Perhaps one of the coolest features of the EFB is the ability to connect it to an external device. Both tablets in the simulator are totally independent and adding an external device acts as yet another independent device. Most tablets and phones are supported providing they have a modern browser. If you're looking to use the tablet on the same device as your PC which is running prepared, so for example you have a second monitor, then setting things up is relatively easy. On any web browser, simply type in localhost or one word lowercase, followed by a colon and then the number 23032 and you'll be instantly sent to a page that looks exactly like the tablet on your sim, except it's now going to be on your second monitor. You can still interact with all the same functionality as we went through before. Now if you're looking to get it on an external device such as a tablet or mobile phone then it's slightly different but the principle remains the same. You're going to need to know what your computer's IP address is. Now this is not the same as typing in my IP address into Google but instead it is your PC's address. If you don't know what your IP address is here's how we found ours. First click on start, search CMD then press enter and have that running so you have a black screen and then you need to type in IP config and press enter. This will then display some of the information related to your IP address. You will need to find your IPv4 address which is listed here. Now on your external device you need to make sure that your device is connected to the same Wi-Fi network and now open up any browser and in the URL bar type in your IPv4 address followed by a colon and then 23032. This should now load up the EFB on your tablet just as it is with uh, in Sim1. The functionality is exactly the same and you can interact with your simulator. So as we go through the options you'll see everything is connected. However it still acts as an external independent device however it does link some information up such as the takeoff data and landing data as well as GSX and also the aircraft options. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use GSX and you can use the SIM options as I'll demonstrate here. Finally, I suggest that you perhaps save this site on your homepage so you can access it anytime. Now you may have noticed that my EFB has the EasyJet branding and you can also configure this to your pleasure as well. So there are different airliner packs over on the Flight Sim Labs forums. So you can simply head over there, find an airline pack, download it, install it, and you will have different ones. So for example, we've got JetBlue, we've got BA, and also Lufthansa as well. So this does really conclude how to install and use the EFB. Of course, this is just a very high level overview as we know many of you are very keen just to get stuck in and try out the device on your external tablet or mobile phone. But once we have spent more time with the aircraft, we'll be back with another feature highlighting the key differences between the wingtip fences and the sharklets. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment down below and we'll do our best to answer them. If this video helped you, great, leave a thumbs up. Otherwise, do let us know, give us a thumbs down and we can help to improve that in the future. 
Once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again on the next FS Elite video.